This is an open letter to the development team working on Elite Dangerous. I have just over 470 hours in this game. I bought it with absolutely no prior knowledge of it and was completely blown away with it when I first played it. I've always played Elite within VR and I was truly impressed by the depth and immersion. I've always had a penchant for simulators, even as far back as the 80s, and virtual reality really nails the experience. I played Elite every day for the first week that I had it, watching hours and hours of tutorials, learning every aspect of the game, the ships, the economy, trading, combat. I quickly found myself all in on exploration, using tools like Road to Riches, and before you know it, I had myself a Crate Mark II. I went all in on opal mining, I loved the combat, but back then the pay just didn't justify the time and effort. I was soon running passenger missions between Robigo, Sothus and Sias, a truly grindy experience that earned me lots of cash and bought me a Ferda Lance and an Anaconda. I nailed my first elite rank on exploration with the Anaconda, building it out for max jump range, a jump conda, as some would call it. I had hundreds of hours in the game at this point and the novelty just didn't wear off. There was still so much to explore, Guardian Ruins, Thargoids, Black Holes, travelling to Sagittarius A, community goals and player organised events. And then it happened. Odyssey was announced. Initially, I was very excited and a little worried. How would I fit in work with space legs and VR, walking around space stations, ship interiors? But none of this was to be. See what happens when you retrofit a first person shooter into a space sim? is that it becomes technically very difficult to do. So Frontier had to deliver what was technically possible. Now I know a thing or two about technical development myself. Keeping it simple and delivering iteratively are without a doubt good development practices. Indeed, these practices have brought us the elite that we enjoy today. It brought us planet landings, fleet carriers, and allowing the scope and complexity to grow out of all proportion is what has led to lots of delays in Star Citizen. But with all things, there needs to be balance. It's got to be technically possible, of course. It's got to allow for further development, and it has to be delivered within a reasonable time frame. But to outright compromise on what the fans want. Elite has first and foremost been a VR experience for me. And I realised that space sims attract a small niche in the gamer market. You only need to look at Twitch stats to see that. And I realised that VR users are a small section within that niche. But to provide a 2D render of the FPS components of this game when you're within virtual reality is hugely immersion breaking. It makes the game feel disjointed and the world's disconnected from the space flying. And why couldn't we have space interiors? It's beyond me. We didn't need the whole ship, just a route from the pilot seat into the space station. And to say that that will slow down the speed at which a player can disembark from their ship and get into the space station in a game in which players spend days, weeks, months traveling to far corners of the universe makes absolutely no sense to me at all. So. I hung up my HOTAS. I moved on to other games. But inevitably I felt the drawback. The longing to see beautiful light shining across asteroid fields. The awe at seeing a massive star fill my view screen as I drop out of witch space into a new system. So I find myself back. Not partaking in the space legs, but I do play in Odyssey. Back to the core of what Elite was, a hugely impressive, complex and beautiful space sim. I truly hope Frontier implement VR for the FPS sections of the game, but I'm not holding my breath. For now, I plan to try Anto Xeno hunting, still something I've not done, but all the while I long for ship interiors, 
VR space legs and complete immersion in an awe-inspiring world. Elite Dangerous. My love-hate relationship.